Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. You join me undercover. We're actually under a bunch of solar panels here just down the street from my house because if you pan around, we are in a torrential downpour, which is unusual for Colorado uh, because we have like 330 days of sunshine a year on average. But I've got the new Genesis Electrified GV70. That is the official name. And I'm excited to tell you all about this vehicle. I think it's a car that no one's talking about because no one really knows about it. It just went on sale. Uh, the marketing campaigns are just going. I saw some YouTube advertisements and I was so excited that uh, Genesis said we could have the opportunity to spend a week with this and do some testing. And so all of that is to come, but essentially I'm gonna drive it for the first time. I'm gonna take you on a tour of this vehicle front to back. We're going to compare it to the Genesis GV60, which is actually a car that my mother owns, and that's their fully electric, a little bit smaller crossover uh, built on the eGMP platform. This has a lot of carryover, but it's still a combustion car adapted for electric. So I'm really excited to see how it does in our range and efficiency tests and 10% challenge, all of these things. So it's kind of a weird car, but it's kind of neat. It's pretty luxurious. And uh, yeah, in this video, I'm gonna take you on a full tour and we're gonna go drive it for the first time. So the first thing we need to start off with is this is a vehicle that is built in the USA. Final assemblies in Montgomery, Alabama. And it is a SUV that's under $80,000. What that means is it should qualify for the $7,500 federal tax credit. Now keep in mind, if you make more than 150,000 or 300,000 jointly, you may not be able to qualify. So there's a lot of like things that the buyer may not qualify for the credit, but I believe the car actually might qualify for the credit. I don't know that to be sure. I don't see a reason why it wouldn't. So this is a built in America electric SUV, small SUV that looks great. Uh, there is no question this is a awesome looking vehicle. Now I've been a fan of the GV70 and the combustion ones I think actually look a little bit better than the electric, especially around the rear. They get really nice exhaust tip cutouts, some little styling things. This looks a little bit toned down for the electric version, but there's no way that you would ever know this is electric. Truly the only styling distinction on the front is that the grill is filled in here rather than having air holes. But even then I'm looking on the roads, I'm trying to see them. I can't even figure out if they're electric or not. The charge port is actually hiding right here in the front. What a weird charge port this is. And we'll get into the charging capabilities, but this truly is a massive charge port door and very nicely integrated there. I do wanna take a look under the hood. Let me show you around the car front to back. We're on 20 inch wheels on this particular one, um, 265. 4520 Michelin uh, primacy, primacy Tour All Seasons, pretty high quality tire. It's an OE spec tire as well, so it's adapted for the car. Love to see it. The back of this car built really well. The body lines are looking nice. Um, you know, this, it, as it sits right now, they start at just under $70,000. This one's about 74 ish. It's got the uh, prestige pack, so it gives you the good sound system, the Napa leather, some other things. By the time you're into this for mid to high 60s, just go for the prestige pack. You want the good stuff. Gives you nicer gauge clusters, head up display, things like that. So um, pretty cool car, a car that I hadn't really spent much time thinking about until it got dropped off and we're able to review it. And unfortunately the weather has been dreadful for days. Um, I don't know if we're gonna be able to get in a range test or anything like that because uh, the weather is just not looking good. So we may have to rearrange to get this car back to do some testing at some point in the near future. Hopefully, you know, we'll do as much as we can while we have it. Okay, so let's talk specs because that's good, the really interesting part of all of this. We have the same 77.4 kilowatt hour battery pack, the same operating nominal voltage of 697 volts as the GV60, as the Ionic 5, as the EV6. So what's going on here? Because this chassis isn't eGMP. So it's not built on the same platform. What I'm guessing is they took the combustion GV70 and they electrified it by slapping in the existing battery pack. And we've seen them do this with the G80. They also have an electrified G80. That's their sort of luxury sedan, one down from the top. And um, 
yeah, I mean, this, this is a, a pretty good idea. The problem is that's only a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery pack powering this fairly large, fairly heavy SUV. I don't think that's enough capacity. It might be, I mean, model wise, what, 82 kilowatt hours. So we're in the range. Mustang Mach-E is 91 kilowatt hours. So it's definitely probably not gonna win the range wars. The eGMP cars at least have proven not to be so efficient on the highway. I'm really curious to see how this does in our range testing. If it can manage 220 miles, 230 miles on a full charge, that's kind of my guess as to where this would come in. It's hard to know without doing the actual test. Then I think that would be acceptable. If it can't crack 200 miles on a charge, then wouldn't be good. You'll have to stay tuned because we're gonna do the testing. Let's talk charging performance. We have a 48 amp onboard charger for AC charging. So same as the other cars. And then we also have a DC fast charging port right here. Now my understanding, you'll see spec sheets from Genesis that say this can charge at 350 kilowatts. It cannot, <laughs> that's just not a thing. Uh, there must be some miscommunication inside Genesis when they share some of these specs. We're gonna do a whole deep dive charging test because while it is the same battery pack as Ionic 5 GV60 that can charge at a peak of 235 to 240 kilowatts, owners of these are reporting they've never seen over 200. So we have some viewers who have recently taken delivery of these and they're like, I can't get over 200 kilowatts. And I remember when Max made a video with this car originally, he mentioned to me, I don't know if it made it in our video or not, he uh, saw one of these on a display in California that Genesis invited us to and he made a video about that. Um, he mentioned it may not charge as fast as the Ionic 5 or GV60. So I need to do a charging test and that will be coming up. And so, you know, the final verdict of this car will not be found in this video because this is just the first taste. Um, truly my first, you know, few minutes with the car getting to experience it, understand it. I wanna see what's going on under the hood. So let's see if I can find the hood release. Here we go. I have no idea if it has a front trunk or not. Let's see if we can find it. Yes, here we go. And whoa, this is not what I was expecting to see. Really big cover. And honestly, not bad. Not bad at front trunk space. It goes fairly deep over here to the left, similar to the other cars. Like they don't give you that much. Tire mobility kit under here. Does any of these, these panels come off? Okay. Sometimes in the other cars, you can actually like remove all of this stuff, but I'm not necessarily, hold on. I think I've found a little thing to lift this up. There we go. Motor SN. What is that? Look down in there. I don't see anything. Anyway, very interesting stuff. Um, yeah, I would, okay. You can keep your cables up here, keep a charging board, keep your tire, you know, air compressor. Nice to have. That's actually fine. I own electric vehicles with front trunks. You guys know that. I also don't use them very often. I think uh, I'm more incentivized to use an electric vehicle with a front trunk if it's powered and there's an access button on the outside. So if I'm just gonna have a passive front trunk like this or my Model S, um, then you know I just kind of throw stuff in there. Our e-tron has a front trunk, for example, and we never use it. We just keep a spare charging cable in there. This has enough room for that. So I'm glad they at least went to that length there. Uh, it is a dual motor drivetrain system, both permanent magnets. And so I believe it's a very similar system to what you're gonna experience in the Ionic 5. What I don't know is if it has a clutch disconnect on the front axle or not. We're gonna have to drive it and see if we can feel it. The way the GV60 works, this car's younger or smaller brother is cruising around in normal mode. It's just rear wheel drive all the time. As soon as you mat the accelerator pedal, it basically locks up the front motor, rev match, clutch goes, and then you get dual motor power output. And the reason they do that is because if you have a dual, well, if you have a permanent magnet motor that's not helping you move along, there are some flux related losses, there's gear train related losses, and you can have one, two, or three kilowatts of drag on there. So for efficiency, it's better to disconnect. It's expensive, the tuning's really hard to do, but they've already got that figured out, so I hope that's in here. It's a dual 160 kilowatt output, so they're identical motors, front and rear. Unsure of the gear ratio on each. Definitely feels like when we drive it, we're gonna see if it's a little bit rear bias. It could be just a gear ratio thing. And uh, looking forward to playing around with that. 
The brake calipers on this car are white. <laughs> that is a bold move. Take a look in here, white calipers. And you can see the brake discs look brand new as well, brand new scoring. And so my guess is this car is about 1400 miles on it, 1300 miles on it. I, my guess is this thing's just been regen braked its whole life. It does have eye pedal with one pedal driving like we've experienced in all the stuff. And what's kind of cool with Genesis and Hyundai and Kia, obviously they're all leveraging the same technology and then packaging that technology in different ways. For example, this is a upscale, medium-sized SUV that certainly doesn't look electric, doesn't scream electric, but it does scream a little bit more quality than you would get in a Hyundai or a Kia. However, the battery pack's the same, the motors are the same, so it's really a materials difference and packaging difference here. Let's take a look in the trunk since we're talking storage space. Love the back end styling on this. We're starting to see this more flat, um, sort of carved of one styling here from Land Rover's doing this with the new Range Rover, the new Range Rover Sport, this, a few others, it's really in. Now to open the trunk, there's gotta be a button somewhere. Let's see if there is. Um, I'll grab the very complicated key. Take a look here, all the buttons. It has smart park, smart pack, I guess lights, <laughs> alarm, unlock, lock, and hold for trunk. The car is on, which is probably why the trunk won't open. So let me shut this thing off and then we can open the rear trunk. So car is off, hold the trunk button down. There we go, so that was the problem. And up we go on the trunk. Yeah, you know, pretty spacious for sure. Um, no, no issues here. Looks like we get a um, charging cable here. Let's take a look to see what it comes with. So we have a 120 volt NEMA 520 plug. Here's their EVSE. Same thing they've delivered in the original Kona electrics to now. Uh, I believe it's 12 amps. Let's take a look. Yep, 12 amps, not a dual voltage. Unit. I think this is probably not the right decision, especially for a Genesis, a vehicle that you're spending more money for. For example, the EV6 doesn't come with a, um, doesn't come with a, a mobile EVSE anymore. They only come with a, uh, you know, nothing basically. And so if you're gonna include one, I would include a split voltage, especially on a premium car, make it NEMA 1450 version that's compatible. Um, we have a trunk, um, little storage separator, if you will. And then under here, what else is going on? We have some, well, we have some owner's manuals, navigation. This is the, holy smokes. This is the Genesis 6 premium class navigation owner's manual. Is this literally all just on the navigation system? I think it is. <laughs> what? That's crazy. This is like 2004. I've n this is such a waste of paper. No owner will ever look at this. Just put it in your screen in the cars. That's crazy. What else do we have? Connected services user manual. What if you want to update the car? How are you going to do that? So that's wild. Then we have this box, which I'm not sure what this is. Electrified GV70 USA. Whoa. Oh, here, now we get the owner's manual in white. Let's take a look. So this is the vehicle owner's manual. Honestly, not as long as the navigation system owner's manual. <laughs> so that goes through everything on the vehicle side. What else do we have? We have the warranty information and owner's handbook supplement. Wow, lots of material here. I mean, they could save some serious weight out of this vehicle if they just make this all digital, which is what everyone else is doing. They also include the V to L adapter, which is great. So this is something that we've done with Ionic 5. We've made videos with this adapter before. We actually have one. You plug it into the J1772 port and it allows AC out through a NEMA 520, uh, 515 plug right here. So you can do uh, you know 12 or 15 amp uh, output there, run a microwave. My mom and dad have made videos with their Ionic 5. Camping out, they ran a toaster, they ran, I don't even know what else they did, bunch of stuff. One thing I'm noticing back here, is, ugh. let's just make sure, see we're not missing anything. Nope, no more extra storage. Uh, one thing I'm noticing back here is a, another power outlet for V to L. I don't know if the camera will be able to pick it up. I also don't know if I can really open it, but, oh yeah, there we go. 
another power outlet right there. So I love the idea of being able to take power out of your high voltage battery pack through an onboard inverter and pulling it out. So this has all of that. Wow, that was quite a bit in the trunk actually. That's more than we most, than we usually get in the back of a vehicle. The back seats is gonna be the next topic. How will I fit? How will I feel back there? So let's just make sure we still have audio coming through. So how are we looking? Good. We're looking good. Okay, our mics are like dying. So forgive us for the quick overview. Everything's going wrong for this shoot. We, our weather sucks, we're pressed for time. We gotta film the GV70. So here I am, and wow. First of all, no room. But Alyssa, would you mind hopping in the driver's seat, turning on the vehicle, and seeing if it's in an easy entry exit position? So put your foot on the brake and hit the start button in there if you don't mind. There we go. Ah, yes, now the seat's moving to my position. So now you can pop back. So the seat is now selected to where I would sit, and there's much more room here. Looks like there's a little coat hook or something going on right here. Really nice glass roof that comes all the way back. Um, Alcantara headliner, very premium feeling, no question. The back seats feel nice. They're kind of sculpted. They also recline way back. So that's really great. Two cup holders here. <coughs> and really a, a, a great back seat. I actually have a lock and unlock control. I have a window control as well. We have double pane windows front and rear. So that's pretty neat. Small double pane, it's not like an Audi double pane, but it's close. But the switch gear feels nice. The lock and unlock seems to work pretty well. Door handles, everything is a step up for sure and matching, I would say, the Genesis quality. Um, and on the topic of Genesis quality, I would say Genesis calls themselves luxury. And I think a lot of people who drive a Genesis feel like it's a real luxury vehicle. But to be totally honest, like the quality of the Napa leather that they're using is nowhere near like the, what the Germans put in their vehicles. I think it feels a little bit greasier, a little bit slimier. Um, just the just little things always sometimes feel a little bit hollow or plasticky. And so I would say Genesis is perceived luxury rather than actual luxury. I mean, definitely you get out of a BMW iX and into this. And while this might have a lot more features than the iX, especially features as standard, there is something that the, the Koreans haven't matched the Germans across all of their product lines uh, in terms of like total, uh, I don't even know, the intangibles of the car would be the best way to describe it. The door handle feeling, the door thunk, the material usage, the way things fit together. It's a lot of like hard edges on the plastic back here, things that you just don't typically see in a high-end Mercedes or high-end BMW. And so that's how Genesis is able to get the cost in line for this vehicle. Because if you compare this to a new Q8 e-tron or to a new iX, this is significantly less expensive than the equivalently optioned German choices. And so for many people, they don't mind this uh, stuff. So my mom drives a Genesis. She's driven Mercedes and BMWs and other nice vehicles for years, 20, 30 years. And she thinks it's just the best thing ever. She loves it. She doesn't notice these little things. It could just be a me thing because I'm in and out of these vehicles all the time. But there is something mm, lacking whenever I drive a Genesis. I'm like, this is like how if I described a luxury car to someone, this is what would be popped out of that description. But it's not actually a luxury car, <laughs> but it's close. And the price point, uh, certainly this punches above its weight for its price. So don't let that deter you. Uh, the size of the vehicle is great. The, the fit and finish, again, really nice. Um, love that you can put roof rails on this. I mean, it's really, what's kind of cool, it's stealthy. No one would have no, any idea that this is a fully electric package. So just showing you into the driver's seat really quick. Little things I was talking about, those luxury feelings. Driver's seat has massaging. Passenger seat does not have massaging. I just dropped a water bottle. Can you make sure it's not spilling in the back? my elbow hit it, it's fine, okay. Um, so yeah, I got a whole bunch of multi-way option on the seat. You can see here, this is out, coming up and going down, which is really great. There's a massage function, which is this button here. I can squeeze the seat closer, farther apart. Lots of interesting little details. Let's hop inside, wanna talk more about the software integration of everything, and then we're gonna take it for a drive. 
you join me inside the Genesis GV70 now. And by the way, I wanted to at least show you the window sticker. 2023 Electrified GV70 All-Wheel Drive Prestige. It comes with three years of 30-minute Electrify America charging, 74350 as tested. And you can see final assembly is done in Alabama. So all seems pretty good here. The price certainly is expensive, um, but, but like it... You, there's a lot of nice things here. You get this full Napa dash with a premium package. To me, the, the interior styling doesn't quite match the exterior. Quite bulbous, quite large. These surfaces are, you know, just like, why is this so far close to me? Like, go back, give me more interior space. But I, I kind of get what they were going for. The white steering wheel is going to look disgusting in just, you know, 10,000 miles. <laughs> I think this is a bad idea. I like it, and I remember the ID4 First Edition had it, and I really liked it. But now seeing all of the ID4 First Editions with the white wheel, like, you know, two years on, ooh, not aging so well. So some other things we get with the Prestige Pack is a full 3D uh, instrument cluster. So take a look right here. If you can take a look here, you'll see, uh, you know, there's sort of a depth effect inside of this. I think that's nice. The uh, instrument cluster, the HMI here, this is all straight out of the GV60 and other models as well. It can do a lot. There's a lot of sub menus. There's a lot of settings that you can go through. So just as an example, we can go over here to EV and we can go, you know, max charging on AC or DC. What's interesting is unlike the other cars, they let you set it from, I think, 10% down up to 100. Here, for example, you go from 50 to 100. So I think what we'll do is we'll set this to 90% for AC charging and 100% on a DC charger. Um, you know, utility mode is great. Basically, you keep the car on. You have a whole bunch of driving settings. Um, so much in here and uh, sound noises you can play with and, you know, just goes on and on and on. You can even have it set so when you go into a tunnel, it will automatically recirculate the cabin air. This is no no different than the other cars, really. I haven't found anything unique settings-wise that we haven't already talked about in EV6 or Ionic 5 or GV60 here. So I think uh, we're okay to gloss over most of that stuff. Moving down from the main screen, you have all of your um, temperature controls. And I really think this is laid out very nicely. You have these um, sort of dials that are beautiful. They back their, uh, you know, digital here. They feel nice, they look good. We can adjust to a medium or high automatic fan speed, which I like two levels of steering wheel heating. I love that the Hyundai products give you this driver only mode. We use this on our range tests, of course, but if there's no one else in the car, why, uh, why run fans over there? Heated and cooled seats, no, you can't do them at the same time, unfortunately, um, but everything looks really nice. Touching a lot of this stuff, just plastic. So that's, that's a little bit odd. Um, moving farther down from that, you have your drive mode selection. So you have uh, eco, comfort, and sport in my mode, and you can push in one direction, and you go into snow mode. Um, so you can, of course, adjust all of that. We'll put it back into comfort. How I think everyone will drive this car most of the time. Volume, this is a really nice, high-quality, knurled metal volume knob right here. But every time you touch it, you're feeling really nice metal up against kind of garbage plastic. So <laughs> it's like some things, again, really nice in certain places. Would have been great if they just went all out and made all these materials feel really nice. Then you have your track uh, left, you know, sort of next and back. You have your, your home controls, your HMI controller. It is a touch screen, by the way. So we can go up here and touch everything if we wanted to. Um, or of course we have uh, the controller. The one downside about this controller is it's literally right in front of the gear selector. So, you know, sometimes you'll be driving, cruising along and you're like, oh, okay, let me just adjust something. Let's go back a song and you go, oh, dang, I'm in neutral. So that's something that you'll get used to as you own the vehicle. It's just a point uh, that I had to bring up. Really nice, beautiful shifter here. No cool orb like the GV60 has, but this is a really nice backlit shifter. Goes with the color ambient lighting that you have inside the vehicle selected at the time. You have a wireless charger. And then very oddly, only USB-A ports in this vehicle. What is going on with that? This is 2023. This is an electric car. EV owners are pretty far advanced, USB-C only in my opinion. And interestingly, it has, well, it has a little shelf that I just ripped out that I have to replace in there, just like, you know, Tesla has something like this and some others. Uh, it has a key card, a Genesis key card. So you can keep this in your wallet as a backup. I believe you can also use your phone as a key and this could be the backup. 
but then again, you also do have that physical key as an option. 12 volt outlet in here, really nice. We're seeing a lot of EVs actually go away from having 12 volt outlets. I'm not sure why. I'm glad this one has it in there as well. And a pretty deep, of course, storage console that goes forwards a little bit there. So really nice um, storage ability. Steering wheel again is white. Your controls are literally the same as everything else in this category. You have your panels to adjust your regen settings. You have your driver assistance uh, options surprisingly on the right typically they're on the left but here they're on the right side so you have of course you know your active steering which you can separate from cruise control all the same stuff from the other cars you guys are familiar with you have all your volume controls and uh, media on the left side of the wheel nothing here is unusual or different or odd the only thing unusual i would say is it does have downhill brake control automatically for a little bit of off-roading to go downhill but we will not be uh, really testing that or anything unless we want to go mudding in the GV70, which is not its intended purpose. So um, what do you say we get to the driving part of this? We'll keep it fairly quick because I want to get to more testing and I want to do a charge test and some other things. By the way, uh, speaking of charge testing, the preconditioning function on this vehicle operates the same as the Ionic 5, uh, which we've made a video with. You basically select the charger inside the screen here. And if you're in with a certain distance range or in temperature range, it will precondition on the way to the charger. And it does pull up a little battery icon in the left for preconditioning. And it even gives you a little notification once the minimum cell uh, temperature reaches 21 degrees C and says preconditioning is complete. So that works great. Preconditions pretty fast, love to see it. If you take a look here on the instrument cluster on this right gauge, you'll see a few different bars. And so right now I can go from zero, this is your regen display, to level one, level two, level three, and eye pedal. And so I really like how they have that displayed on the right side, what regen setting you have. Unfortunately, and just like all the other Hyundai Kia Genesis products, you cannot default to eye pedal. You always have to pull the left paddle every time you get in. There's also automatic regen and all of these little things as well. Um, and uh, we'll talk about driver assistance when we go on the highway, but only HDA one here. So in terms of pedal calibration, honestly, you've seen me drive all the other eGMP cars. The motors feel identical. So cruising along, there's almost no motor cogging. The one pedal calibration is wonderful, brings us to a stop, can't even feel it. So it's all like, this is gonna be an abridged first drive because there's honestly not much new to tell you. It drives exactly as you would expect. Close your eyes, you could be in an EV6 or an Ionic 5 or a GV60. And um, you know, the tuning is just so good. So to me, it feels like they really spent so much time fully engineering the noise characteristics of the powertrain, the thermal characteristics, the power splits, the way everything works, because they knew it was going to go into all of the electric products. We were so blown away, me and other reviewers, when the Ionic 5 first launched, because that was the first eGMP vehicle that I had the pleasure of driving. And we thought, wow, they've just gone over-engineered to the max. It's perfect, like everything is so great. Now we know why they spent so much money on it because they're using that drivetrain, this drivetrain in so many vehicles. So it was money well spent because it really leads to some great packages. The steering is very light. It's as you would expect, very direct, um, not much feel. It's not a performance car. It's not meant to be. Um, but then there's, you know, like I mentioned, all of those drive modes, there's also this button down here, this boost button. We've seen this before on the GV60 that we drove that had a little boost button here on the left steering wheel. It's like a green button. And um, my mom owns a GV60 Performance. I was like, mom, have you ever used the boost button? She's like, what button? I'm like the big acid green button that says boost. She said, I oh, know, I never even noticed it, never tried it. <laughs> so I'm not sure the target audience needs the boost function of this vehicle, but now that we're out on the road, we'll hit it. We get 10 seconds of max power, which is high 400 horsepower range, still under 500. So boost is on, throttle position gets crazy. We get a countdown here on the display. Let's go full power. Wow, wheel spin in this wet condition. This is not a slow vehicle. Uh, what's weird is there's also an active seat portion, at least on the driver's side, not on the passenger side. So when I hit boost, the throttle mat moves, the seat comes in, and um, it's fast. No question, this thing boogies. So there's a few things I'd like to test is actually to go into um, eco mode here. I'm going to see if it gives me the drivetrain split view, which I haven't played around much with the uh, menu options here. 
But you guys know when you drive uh, Ionic 5, for example, we get this menu and here it is. And uh, basically it will tell us how much power is coming from the rear or the front. I wanna see if it has a clutch disconnect on the front motor. It'd be really interesting to see if they didn't because the tuning is so good that I haven't noticed it up to this point. So while we're just sitting at the light, let's talk visibility, viewpoints, everything like that. You sit very high in this vehicle so I can see completely over the hood. Um, the seating position is a very good seating position for what the target audience was looking for in this vehicle, which is total visibility. Very little blind spot except for the C pillar all the way in the back. It might even be a D pillar on this particular vehicle. Um, that's a little bit thicker than I would like, but large mirrors with built-in blind spot monitoring. Uh, the traditional blind spot monitoring works very well. So I'm pleased to see that. You also have at least, it might be standard, it might be in the prestige trim, these cameras that pop up on the side. This is one of my favorite features. You can see it goes left or right side. We've seen this from, you know, for years now, but this is a feature that they should have, every car should have. It is so nice uh, to be able to just do visually, you know, check your mirror, check your blind spot. As you come back to center with your eyes, you just glance at the little camera screen there and just double check that there's no one there. It's really a great backup to have. So here we are cruising. I'm gonna take it out of iPedal and you can see we actually are using just the rear motor right now. iPedal does keep everything connected and that actually could be why I haven't felt it connect or disconnect because I've just been driving an iPedal, um, which is how I would drive it if I owned it all the time. I don't love the idea of that motor uh, connecting and disconnecting all the time. It, it, it will eventually wear down that clutch, but full power and eco mode, definitely just rear wheel drive. How about that? And if I go up to comfort mode, so there we go, comfort mode, cruising, We'll wait for the screen to go away. It's just rear wheel drive. If I mat the throttle, I assume it'll feel just like an Ionic 5. Yes. <laughs> so you get the initial hit and then the front motor blends in. It's so well tuned. It's unbelievable when you think about everything that's going on from a drivetrain perspective. If I bump it into sport, sport mode should keep everything locked up all the time. Same with snow and it absolutely does. And no matter what, if I'm in iPedal mode, because that's one pedal driving lots of regen off throttle, um, yes, it keeps everything fully connected. So it's literally take the same drivetrain that you and I know and love and have appreciated for years now and put it in a relatively classy, um, elegant, right, uh, sort of mid, upper mid-size SUV, five-seater, and you have a really nice package at a very good price because the use case for this vehicle for most people will match an iX, will match an e-tron. And the tech, no question, is right up there with those vehicles. I haven't driven the Q8 e-tron yet. By the time this video goes live, I'll actually be on a plane to go drive that vehicle. So you'll see videos coming soon. But um, overall, wow, I am just blown away with the initial impressions it's so quiet in here, so quiet in here. And um, it's far more luxurious than a Model Y or something like that. This is not in the same category as Model Y. Uh, th this, this is a total, total another ball game and it's priced in a totally another ball game. You know, Model Y starts at what, 46,000 now? This starts at 65,000 or so, maybe even more 68,000. So, you know, different types of vehicles. Um, I think the one downside that I'm feeling right off the bat here is we're at 50% state of charge. On the Gesso meter, we have 130 miles of range predicted, 260 miles indicated on a full charge. Um, I was gonna say that would be a downside. That actually sounds pretty good considering it's got a small battery. I would have loved to see them put in, you know, a 100 kilowatt hour battery in here that could charge at 300 kilowatts or so. That would have been next level. Um, but still, for the price, for the luxury that you get in this thing, it might be a good option. It might be the package to go for. There's still more testing to do. Let's go out on the highway, try the driver assistance, feel the ride comfort, see what this all is like. But so far, I am really digging this car. By the way, the hi-fi sound system in here is great. If you go for the premium pack or the prestige pack, I believe it gives you the upgraded sound system go for it. It's actually lacking a little bit on the base when you compare it to e-tron or iX in their Bowers and Wilkins systems. However, I think Audi uses Bang & Olufsen, but they're all, you know, same suppliers, just different names. Um, the highs and the mids in this sound system might be 
next level. Might be some of the best I've ever heard. The, the space, the spatialness of this sound system is very good. So I, I think they're kind of nailing it here. Before we go on the highway, Alyssa, you're behind the camera. Would you like to share some of your initial impressions of the GV70 Electrified? Oh yeah. Can we talk about how dumb of a name that is? <laughs> I don't think I would ever uh, call it that every single time if I owned it personally, but- um... It's like, they actually use the word correctly. Because right. most like mild hybrid vehicles, are, that's the electrified version. <laughs> um, but so, yeah. the electrified should be fully electric, I think. Right, right. I mean, so I drive it around for a little bit and I will say I did have this issue. Um, and I also couldn't Which find- Which is what exactly? The issue of, I went to go and turn this, but I ended up turning this. Oh, so you wanted to adjust the, the navigation system. Well, I think I was honestly just trying to figure out where the volume button is, oh. and I figured out <laughs> that it was right there. Yes, um, but that will all come with time. Right, yeah, so that's just a little uh, nitpick. But I would agree with the leather just feeling a little slimier. I don't like how white it is in here personally, but that's just a... Uh, color and trim selection yeah i mean that that's something little but other than that the it drives really well it, the acceleration's awesome and yeah, it's way faster than you yeah would think. and it's pretty smooth but i wouldn't say it's like my e-tron smooth when going over bumps i felt a little a little bit more than i would feel in that car sure. but i mean they're targeting the right audience to me like the first impression i got when i got in this car is like i just feel like this is an old man's lexus Yes, I just, every time I think of a Genesis product, and I forget, this is really not the right way to think about it, yeah. I think Florida Retirement Community. Yeah, me too. I thought my <laughs> I thought of my grandfather's, because he had a Lexus before he got his Model Y, and yes. it literally, it just reminded me of this. And it is a premium experience. Um, I, I'm not a huge car nerd like you are, so I would have been fooled by all of this. I would hop in here and say, okay, yeah, this is super nice. And, um, but you know, like when you drive your e-tron, well, now that I have that car, sure. Yeah. I have that, that higher level, but if I never nice. had that, then I would have never known. Absolutely. So, I, I mean, I think they fooled, they fooled people pretty well. I'll, I'll put it that way, but everything is nice. But like you said, there's just little cheap, cheap things here or there. So I'm just going through some of the drivetrain settings here and you'll notice it has, um, a brake setting. I forget the name of the supplier of this brake pedal, but they're a popular supplier. They do really good work. You can choose a sport or brake pedal. And take a look, because we have the uh, destination programmed in, it just popped up and said battery conditioning. So the battery must have cooled down and now it's rewarming itself back up because I never took out the charging station. Oh you know yeah, I mean? interesting. So it keeps conditioning, making sure we get there on time. That's great. That's a huge plus. And yeah. now I'm also noticing the texture on the behind this wheel here. Oh, well, that's and then, bad. And then right here too, it kind of yeah. looks like something inappropriate. It just doesn't look yeah. good right there. So uh, yeah, I mean, there's just little things once you dive a little bit deeper into it. But other than that, it's good. Yeah, it's not Audi level. It's not no, BMW level. No, <laughs> no. But, but again, it's not priced at those levels it's like no. a very good interim well no this is 72 72 and e-trons are 90 for a prestige this is oh, nicer well, yeah than a base i guess e -tron. yeah yeah or, and i think it's actually nicer probably than a base ix I and mean, it probably goes further than the e-tron does i mean i'll throw my car under the bus anytime <laughs> but of course now they have the q8 so you know we'll have so to see. we'll yeah we'll definitely see if if yeah. that is a good option but yeah. overall i think it's Wow, they put new sirens on that thing. You hear that? Yeah, that was... That's like a weak siren. Yeah, yeah, I had no clue that was even happening. <laughs> yeah, just, that's like, they need to It's usually that. like extremely obnoxious, and I guess, or that, but... All right, uh, let's jump on the highway. Let's see how this thing does, um, but uh, agreed. It's not, not max luxury, but it is certainly more than premium. It could fool the eye, for it, sure. It can fool, at glancing at it, it's very nice. Yes. yes into sport mode getting onto the highway now I'm gonna hit the boost function full send a little bit of torque steer foot through the front wheels it leans up on the back this is not tuned to go shred canyons and nor should it be and that's why i think no owner will ever really even put their vehicle in sport mode there's no need um, just keep it in comfort cruise along so let's merge on over headlights are on we're good to go and uh, oh we got Big boy diesel over here. How about see you later? And uh, saving the planet, sir, in my electric 5GV70. I keep hating the name. They should just call it the GV70 electric, but whatever. I think that's what it, anybody's really gonna call it. Totally. And yeah. There must be some reason why they're not. But we'll set it at 70 miles an hour. We'll put active steering on, and here you go. HDA1, even in these conditions, 
absolutely rocking. Um, now, this is one of my favorite driver assistance systems on the planet. And the reason for it is it's unintrusive, it gets the job done, it's very, I would say, lackadaisical. That, is that the word? Very chill with its inputs. It's, yeah, I it's guess not so. like Tesla where it will just slam on the no. brakes randomly sometimes. Um, Fury. Yes. <laughs> sure. So it's a very good tuned system. Yes. The one downside, though, and it actually did just happen back there, is the steering will shut off without warning. So you'll just be cruising along, expecting this to do everything. It is a hands-on system, and it is uh, torque, not capacitive. Uh, if we have time, I'd like to run it through a hogback, but I don't actually think we'll have time before it goes back. There's no way. There's, um, right, so it just kind of cruises along and, uh, you know, can just shut off, which is not cool. No vibrations, no nothing. This, uh, no, right, yeah, which is, they all work that way, and I think it's all dangerous, and I'm surprised we don't hear more situations with that. However, with that said, you don't get HDA2 on their higher end products, which makes no sense to me. So no automatic lane changes like you actually get in the Ionic 5 and EV6 with Tech Pack. So what that means is when I put my signal on, steering is now off, I can move over to this lane, and as soon as I'm over in this lane, it locks steering back on. So it works really well, um, it just doesn't make the lane changes automatically. You also lose some uh, cross traffic detection on the front, things like that without HDA2. Guys, I'm so sorry for mentioning that this car only has, uh, does not have lane change assist and doesn't have HDA2. I'm just finding in the system, it does. Uh, the Genesis GV60 does not get HDA2, but this apparently does. You can see I can click the left turn signal and it will automatically, I'm not touching anything, initiate this lane change all by itself. Beautiful displays, everything like that works. So it does have highway lane change assist. I really apologize for uh, letting you think that it didn't. And I love that you can customize your, uh, you know, sort of driving style on a few different factors as part of the cruise control. So apologize for the misinformation, but I'm glad we're able to correct it in the video. Too. Does it speed up when you're moving? It still will it do does that. Still speed up, you, okay. Yeah, it'll do a little bit of acceleration to pass, yes. Um, can we just talk about how quiet this car is? It is very quiet. I think it's not quite e-tron quiet. No. But it's very close. It's getting there. So it's just a little like notch below German quality level sure. car. Yeah, no question. Yeah. But I actually think this is what most people would prefer to go for because you get so much tech compared to those cars. Yeah, people are more into tech these days, but I wouldn't say, I mean, it just depends on the generation. And I feel like the generation targeted for this car, I don't know how techy exactly they are. Just like your mom, like you said with your mom, she didn't yeah. even use the button, so. Good point, yeah. good point. But um, yeah, no, no question, like for me, I, l I would love to take this on a road trip. Yeah. I think it's really great. I think it's, um, they, they still need to work on their software integration of everything. You know, the fact that the route planning is not very good and that, you know, the, the navigation system is nowhere near as intuitive as Tesla or Porsche or Rivian. They're so far behind with that. There's no plug in charge available on this vehicle. So you have to go to a charging station, take out your app, swipe to start. But that's for a lot of cars still. Which is ridiculous. It shouldn't right. even be the case yeah. anymore. Um, so, you know, I think that's almost inexcusable at this point. Yeah. I mean, my e-tron asks for oil changes still, so we, you know. <laughs> that's also crazy. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think this, if you compare this to Q8 e-tron, that's going to probably go farther on a charge now because they put a big ass battery in that thing. Hopefully. Um, and it's going to ride better because it's on air suspension. This isn't, but it's also going to cost more. And I think this might be the happy medium. Yeah. For most people, this, I mean, it rides amazing. It's it looks so good. It looks great, and it's got pretty much everything you can need. Maybe they need to work on a little bit of back-end integration of everything, but as a car that you drive, you charge at home 99% of the time, you want to take you know another couple out to dinner, this is certainly classy enough to do that. You can do your daily shopping with it. It's a car that will never annoy you, I think, and it just hits all the points perfectly. And what's crazy is it's something we've never talked about before. No. I don't think we've and ever I mentioned this And I just noticed car. this stitching, too. Really nice. nice small details. Yeah. But then there's also this button that I can adjust the oh, seat. Stop it. No, no, no. No, 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 no. I put Alyssa all the way in the dash the other day. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, there you go. Electrified GV70 gives like very high marks from me. The initial impression is this thing rocks, hits everything you need it to hit, 
It's very uh, well built. It's got great powertrain. I, I don't know what more you would need. I could see maybe wanting a few little things here or there where it's not quite perfect, where you do get these little plastics and maybe cheap materials in certain places to kind of keep the cost down. But it's it's neat. It's very good and most people won't nitpick on those little things. So there you go, we have more testing to do. I cannot wait to see how far this goes on the charge. That will almost make or break the vehicle. I agree, yeah. Because I, I really don't know if it's gonna be, you know, 180 miles or 250 miles. I have no clue what the efficiency is gonna be. So that's a big question mark because we've seen these eGMP cars all over the place. Now we have a totally different chassis with that drivetrain don't know what to expect. The next thing is going to be the 10% challenge. My guess is this is going to do really well in the 10% challenge because the new Hyundai, this battery pack charges amazing. But is it going to charge at the same rate as GV60 Ionic 5? That remains to be seen. I can't wait to do it. We're actually out running the battery down now to do the first charging test on this vehicle. And um, so there you go. The initial impression is stellar. Wait for more of our videos to come out over the next week or two as we really try and benchmark this. Again, the weather's been crazy. This is the first bit of dry road we've seen all week. So we're gonna try and cram everything in. In the middle of this, I gotta go to Napa and drive the Q8 e-tron. You'll see videos on that soon as well. So it's just getting pretty crazy over here, but I can't thank you enough for watching this video. And uh, we'll see you now from Wellington, Colorado, right where we start our range tests where all the chargers are ripped out of the ground. That will be on another video as well. So, Lots of videos to come. <laughs> oh, so many videos, but there's a lot to talk about, but I'm really enjoying this car. So Genesis, great job. I think as far as a existing platform converted to electric, it feels about the same as a GD60 in terms of quality, which is a full electric car built from the ground up. So great work to your engineers. Thanks for watching. See you in another one soon. Bye-bye.